Hello and welcome everyone to today's video on the topic of experimental research designs. In today's video, we discuss and learn about the two main types of research designs. Firstly, we look at the between subjects design and secondly, we look at the within or repeated subjects design. We understand each of these research designs with examples of studies that use these designs and then also look at the advantages and the disadvantages of using these designs. So without further ado, let's begin the video. So the between subjects research design is a type of a research design in which different participants are allocated or recruited across the different experimental conditions and groups in a study. Let's understand this better with an example. Imagine you're trying to discern the number of items recalled and the recall accuracy of those items based on the type of training your participants receive. You could subject the participants to a memory-specific training or a non-memory-specific training, such as a spatial skills training. For this study, you will recruit a sample of population and then you could subject them to a specific learning task. For example, you could ask your participants to learn two different lists. In list 1, you could ask the participants to learn about the associations between names and faces of people. In list 2, you could ask the participants to learn about the names of famous cities and cuisines found in those cities. Following this, you could randomly allocate a subset of your participants to condition A of the study, which in this example could be a memory training condition, and you subject the other part of your sample to condition B, which would be the non-memory training or the spatial skills training in this particular condition. Following this, the participants would then participate in a recall test in which we would assess the performance of recall accuracy and uh, the uh, number of items recalled. But that's not the interest of this particular video. The key takeaway here is that in this current study, there are two different conditions, A and B, and different participants have been recruited in each of these conditions. This is the between subjects research design. So now that we understand what the between subjects design is, let's look at the advantages of using the between subjects design. The first advantage of using the between subjects design is that it prevents the effects of learning or crossover effects as well as practice effects. Let's understand this with an example. For example, we want to study if the differences in the type of stimulus presented in a cognitive paradigm called the flanker task impacts one's cognitive control performance in this particular task. Imagine in condition A, you present the participants with a arrow stimuli and in condition B of the study, you present the participants with a shape stimuli such as triangles. You do this across both congruent and incongruent trials in both condition A and condition B. Now imagine a situation wherein unlike the between subjects design, the participant is recruited to perform in both conditions A and B of the study. In such a situation, there is a high possibility that they would display learning, crossover or practice effects. But how does this happen? Let's understand. So imagine that this specific participant, let's assume she's called Ella, is performing in condition A for say about 100 trials across both the congruent and the incongruent trials. It is very likely that she will develop the skills to perform in the flanker task more generally. When she is then subjected to condition B, she might just use her past experience of the learning that she has attained in condition A which could enhance her performance, giving us an erroneous estimate of her cognitive control abilities across the different experimental conditions. In such a situation, we might conclude, however erroneously, that Ella has better cognitive control for shape stimuli as opposed to the arrow stimuli. This is the issue of practice, crossover or learning effect which is not faced in a between subjects design since we recruit different participants across the different conditions. 
The next advantage of using the between subjects design is that this research design prevents participant fatigue. Because each participant in this research design participates only in one condition, they don't have to repeatedly participate across different conditions or groups. This allows them to not experience any effects of fatigue. This is very important as getting fatigued can impact participant performance in the cognitive tasks negatively, in turn impairing our conclusions of the research question and research studies. However, this design helps us to avoid any such situation and therefore this is one of the main advantages also of using the between subjects design. Finally, the other key advantage of using the between subjects design is that this design allows us to collect a large amount of data within a short period of time by allowing us to simultaneously test multiple variables and conditions or experimental groups. So in the flanker task example that we saw before, with the between subjects design, we could collect the data of all participants simultaneously across the various conditions and the various trial types. Let's now look at the key disadvantages of using the between subjects design. The first key disadvantage of this particular type of design is that a large participant pool has to be recruited in studies that use the between subjects design. This can be a challenge as it can be difficult to find participants to take part in a study. If we don't have many participants, it might be difficult therefore to use this particular design. So this is the first disadvantage. Moving on. The other disadvantage of using the between subjects design is that it can decrease our control over the confounding variables. To understand what confounding variables are, you can check out our video on confounding variables by clicking the i button on the top right corner of the screen or finding the link in the description below. Moving on, now there are two specific types of issues that can be difficult to control in this design which can in turn lead to the introduction of confounds. The first type is called the assignment bias and the second type is referred to as the individual variability. Let's look at each of these aspects a little more in detail. The issue of assignment bias arises when participant allocation across the different experimental groups and conditions is not undertaken randomly. Let's understand this with an example. Imagine you're trying to study if there is a difference in the working memory abilities of women versus men. Imagine while recruiting the participants and allocating the participants, the researchers did not match the educational background of the participants such that they ended up recruiting men who had higher educational background than women. Now this situation is likely to introduce the assignment bias issue. After the study is conducted, it's possible that you find that women have lower working memory abilities than men. While it is possible that this is correct, it is well possible that this conclusion could be erroneous and affected by assignment bias. As we saw, the experimenter initially, while allocating and recruiting the participants, did not control for the educational background of the participants, such that the men recruited were higher in their educational abilities than women. And this could have in turn affected the conclusions that we discerned about their working memory abilities, all of which got affected due to the assignment bias issue. The other aspect that can introduce confounds pertains to individual variability. Now recall that the participants across the different conditions of a study are different in the between subjects design. This is very likely to introduce inter-individual differences such as personality trait differences. Although there are ways to address this if remained unchecked, then individual variability could negatively impact the conclusions we make about the research questions of interest by skewing the data. Alright, let's now move on to the next topic 
in which we learn about the within subjects design. Now, the within subjects design is a research design in which we allocate the same participants across the various experimental conditions or groups. Let's look at the same example of the memory recall study and understand this a bit better. Unlike the between subjects design, we can make the same study a within subjects design by simply allocating the same participants across both the memory training and the non-memory training group. So if we made this study a within subjects design, how would it play out? Let's understand. In the within subjects version of this study, we would first subject the participants to a non-memory training condition. Following this, we would account for their memory recall and memory accuracy performance through some cognitive tests. After some time gap, say a few days or weeks, we would then subject the same participants to the memory training group and then account for their performance in memory recall and memory accuracy through some cognitive tests. We then account for any differences that have occurred in their performance based on which training they were subjected to. Now, this is therefore the within subjects research design for the same research question that we saw the between subjects for. So now that we understand what the within subjects design is, let's move on and look at the advantages of using the within subjects design. One of the key advantages of the within subjects design is that this design allows us to have a small sample size. This is because we don't need to recruit the equal number of different participants across the different groups or experimental conditions and that same participants can be recruited across all conditions. Now recruiting participants in general for uh, studies can be very difficult Specifically, if your study requires participants of a specific clinical group or from a specific neuropsychiatric group, it can be very difficult to do a between subjects design. In such scenarios, using a within subjects design can be very helpful. The other advantage of using the within subjects design is that it allows us for a better control over confounds. Now, since the same participants are used across both the conditions or all the conditions in uh, groups of the study, we have a better control over confounds such as the assignment bias that we discussed previously. Additionally, this design allows us to control for individual variability as well, since having the same participants controls for inter-individual differences introduced from the differences in one's age, socioeconomic background, educational background, clinical conditions, etc. Aspects that can introduce inter-individual differences, thereby skewing the data and impacting the final conclusions of the study. Let's now move on to looking at the disadvantages of using the within subjects design. A key disadvantage of the within subjects design is that there is always a possibility of practice effects, learning effects or carryover effects interfering with the final performance of the participants. As in the example of the flank task study as we observed before, if the same participant, that is Ella, is performing in the arrow stimulus variant of the flanker task, then the performance in the shape variant of the flanker task might be impacted by their previous performance in the arrow variant, leading to a better performance in the shape variant of the task. However, this better performance in the shape variant might not be a true indicator of their performance. This interference caused due to the practice, learning or carryover effects can lead to the erroneous conclusions, such as in this example, we would conclude that Ella displays better attention and cognitive control to the shape task as compared to the arrow task. 
wherein it could just be that the better performance is because of practice, learning or carryover effects. The other disadvantage of using the within subjects design is that this can lead the participants to experience fatigue. Now, since the same participants are in all the conditions of the study, it is likely that they can get distracted and become tired over time, leading to the effects of fatigue. The fatigue in this case can be detrimental to their optimum level of performance in the cognitive tasks and paradigms of the study, which can then impair and impact the overall conclusions and the results of the research study in question. Finally, the other issue is that the participants might gauge the aims and the goals of the study since they take part in all the conditions and the experimental groups of the study. Now, this could lead to the subject expectancy effect, wherein upon guessing the aims of the study, the participants try to perform ideally. This interferes with their true performance and does not give us any information about their actual cognitive abilities of interest. All right, so that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for your attention. If you found today's video helpful, then please make sure to subscribe to Brain Cyclopedia for more such content. Also make sure to like this video, share this video with someone you think will benefit and send a comment below. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated with all of our upcoming videos. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media sites on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. You can find the links of these below in the description box and you can also find the links on the channel banner. See you in our next video.